is going to be a little bit on the heavy side, just fair warning. Uh, today we're going to talk about forgiveness and actually forgiveness, what it is and what it isn't. Maybe you're already thinking one of two things. You're already thinking, oh, this is a really good day for me to be here because I have an issue with this. Or you're thinking, oh, no, he's going to ask me to do that thing that I've not been doing for a long time. And I think there's probably only two buckets of people in here because there's probably nobody in this room, myself included, that doesn't struggle with unforgiveness. So forgiveness, what it is and what it isn't. So an interesting thing happened last week after um, I preached. Uh, you guys know I preached on prayer. And like the last three or four minutes maybe of the message, my last point was how we are to forgive. And that when we don't forgive people, God doesn't listen to our prayers. And so that was a, a pretty big point, but it was a very small part of my message. Well, a very strange thing happened. I got more feedback about the last three or four minutes of my message than I did about the whole message that wasn't even on forgiveness. It was about prayer. And, and so I got text messages and had conversations about it. We had conversations out in the lobby about it. I talked to people throughout the week. And every single time I talked to somebody about the message, which I love doing, I love doing, um, every time we talked about it, it was about forgiveness, which again was a very, very small portion. So I, I'm kind of slow sometimes, right? So I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm getting into my week and I'm going, okay, what, what am I going to, you know, preach on next week? Where, where's God leading me? And, and it was almost just like, you know, God had to just kind of thump me in the head and he went, um, how about forgiveness seeing as how like four minutes of your message went so far with so many people. So again, today we are going to talk about forgiveness, what it is and what it isn't. So very few of us have this whole forgiveness thing down well. Now, some of you are really, really, really good at it. And that's awesome. And the, the rest of us, not so much. We constantly struggle with it. So here's some questions. Who hurt you? Who betrayed you? Who lied to you or about you? Who said they would always have your back but ended up being the person who did the most damage? Who mistreated you or took advantage of you? Who were you vulnerable with that ended up exploiting that weakness that you shared? Who did you finally choose to forgive that wronged you again in the same way? Who made a vow to you to never leave, but nonetheless, they're gone? Who in your life had the title of mother or father, but didn't live up to that name? Who pretended to be your friend, but exploited you when they had the chance? Who was supposed to protect you from harm, but instead caused more damage than you can bear, and then twisted it to make you think it was your fault? Who hurt you? And is it even possible and do we really need to forgive someone like that? Told you it was going to be heavy. So my goal today is to prove to you that it's time to let that go. That unforgiveness, the grudge, the resentment, the angst anger that's inside of you and maybe even the malice the ill will that you have towards someone it's time to let it go and today i want to give you the opportunity to forgive someone or something that you should have forgiven a long time ago 
Now, please understand, I don't want to belittle your situation. Okay, I don't want to take that away from you. I don't want to sweep a wrong under the rug. I don't want to be insensitive about this. I don't want to pretend nothing ever happened. I'm not asking you to do that. I don't want to justify their behavior. But I want you to be set free from the bondage of unforgiveness in Jesus' name. And I think that's possible today. Now, Jesus had a lot to say about forgiveness, didn't he? Jesus was kind of an expert at forgiveness, if you really think about it. I mean, I mean, we just celebrated Easter. And Jesus was beaten physically. He was whipped so badly that his bones were expo- exposed and his flesh was just hanging off of him. He was spit just right in his face. They spit on him. He had these big iron nails rammed through his hands and through his feet and hung on a cross to die naked. And as he's hanging there, he said seven things. There were seven last things that Jesus said. Do you know what the very first thing that Jesus said when he was hanging on that cross? After all of that just horrible, horrible stuff happened, the very first thing that he said, what was it? Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. That's my Jesus. That's, I don't know what version of Jesus you were taught before, or, you know, God's mean and God's all this. No, no, no. That's my Jesus. The Jesus that as he was hanging on a cross about to die, the very first words out of his mouth were, forgive them. All of this sin, I take it all. Don't hold this against them, Father. That's the Jesus that I serve. And Jesus was an expert in forgiveness. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 43, Jesus is speaking in the Sermon on the Mount. He says, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Now, what Jesus is saying here, you have heard it said, Jesus was saying, hey, listen, I know that this is the popular belief. I know that this is actually what you have been taught and, and they have taught it from the Old Testament. Now, they've misconstrued it. Don't, don't get me wrong. Don't believe or think that that's really what the Old Testament says. But Jesus is saying, I, I know this is what you guys think and what you're taught and what you culturally are supposed to do. Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. And then Jesus, as he does several times in his ministry and especially in the Sermon on the Mount, he completely flips it upside down. Verse 44, he says, but what I tell you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. Now, these verses don't specifically talk about forgiveness, but it's pretty much implied in here, isn't it? That no matter what, see, because it's easy to forgive somebody that that you, you really get along with and, oh, there was a mistake, but when we're supposed to love our enemies... Obviously, if they're an enemy, they have done something to us or against us. And those are the, sp- the people that we're supposed to love and pray for. Wow. Really, Jesus? Really? He would say yes. Absolutely. Paul, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, he says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other. Why? Why, Paul? Why should we forgive each other? Well, just as in Christ, God forgave you. Oh, okay, well, that kind of puts it in check, doesn't it? Because God forgave me, I'm supposed to forgive other people. So, what is forgiveness and how do I do it? What, what exactly is this forgiveness thing and how do I do it? Well, forgiveness is forgiving someone right isn't it isn't it not okay to use the word in the definition so i don't have an actual definition of forgiveness today what i do is i have a bunch of isn'ts 
and is. So we're going to look at what forgiveness isn't, just like we said in the title, and what forgiveness is. So, you guys ready? You're taking notes, maybe? You may want to write this down. Forgiveness isn't forgetting. Forgiveness isn't forgetting. Now, you're probably going, um, forgive and forget, right? Was that the first thing that came to your mind? We're supposed to, now listen, if you can forgive and forget, good on you. Fantastic, you do that. But, but here's the problem. Just because you choose to forgive someone doesn't mean that the pain that they caused you, however they wronged you, automatically goes away. Sometimes, sometimes people have wronged us or done something to us in a way to where we actually have a physical reminder every single day. And you can't forget about that. So while, yes, the goal is forgetting about what that person did to you, and that's what we're striving for, sometimes there is a constant reminder in our lives of what that person has done to us that we, we can't look past, that it's just there. Maybe it's a, a physical ailment. Maybe it's a, a mental thing. Maybe it's a, a, a complete relational, structural thing. I don't know, but sometimes there isn't a way to actually forget that thing. But there is still forgiveness in the middle of it. There's a, there's a man, you've probably heard of him, named R.T. Kendall. And he's, he, he wrote a book called Total Forgiveness. He's written about eight gazillion books. Um, actually, I think he was over 50 books. And that was like 15, 20 years ago or so. So he, he actually used to attend ICC. Uh, but this book, Total Forgiveness... Um, I can't tell you that I've read it cover to cover. I've, I've heard it, you know, preached on. Actually, I believe I heard R.T. preach on it um, and have used some of the stuff from the book. Now, don't quote me on this because I tried to research it and I couldn't find it. I, I have this saying that I say that I think is from the book. Maybe it's not R.T. If you're watching, I'm giving you credit. He's probably not watching me right now. I'm just going to put that out there. Okay, I'm giving you credit if you didn't say it. I take it back, but, he, but I believe that the book says something like this. Just because you forgive someone doesn't mean you have to have dinner with them. A little bit elementary, but it's true. Just because you forgive someone doesn't mean you have to keep inviting them back into your life to hurt you again. Some doubt now, now, again, is reconciliation the goal, unity the goal, always. But sometimes that is not possible, sometimes that's not okay, and sometimes that's not healthy. And God does not call us to be in what he would consider an unhealthy, unsafe relationship. So while, yes, the goal is to try to forget, forgiveness isn't always forgetting what it is. So forgiveness isn't forgetting. Forgiveness isn't fair. Ooh, that's, I've told you before, that's an F word in my house. By the way, these are all F words just to throw it out there. Forgiveness isn't fair. We don't say fair in my house. That's not a good word because you don't want fair. And there is nothing fair about forgiveness. Nothing at all. You say, you, you just expect me to forgive them with nothing in return? No apology? No reconciliation? Nothing? You just expect me to forgive them? Yes. See, fair would be retribution, wouldn't it? And that's really what we want oftentimes. Fair would be to make them feel the same pain that they have caused us. That's what fair would be. And fair would be having something to hold against them for as long as I want. That would be fair. But speaking of fairness, you don't want fair. Fairness is not what you want, I promise. I'll prove my point this way. 
speaking of Christ on the cross, was that fair? Was it fair for Christ to hang on a cross? The perfect, sinless man bore our punishment and our shame for every single one of us? That wasn't fair. What would fair be? Who would be on that cross if we got fair? You and me. You don't want fair. And forgiveness isn't fair. In Matthew 5, Jesus said to pray for your enemies. Well, <laughs> I pray my enemies get scabies, <laughs> right? In their eyeballs, right? I don't even know if that's possible, but that would be awesome for my enemies, all right? Not exactly how we were going to pray. In fact, we read that song a couple weeks ago. But David, the reason I bring that up, David kind of had a, a little bit of an issue with this. David in the Psalms, we can read, and he is quite explicit in his desires of what he wants to happen to his enemies. In Psalm 3, 7, it says, Arise, Lord, deliver me, my God. Strike all my enemies on the jaw. So pause right there. So if it's not bad enough, like David's calling for God to like physically punch them in the mouth. All right. Now, again, it's figurative, but he wanted harm against his enemies. But like I, just personally, I think he goes a little bit too far in this next line here. He says, break the teeth of the wicked. He's like, God, I not only want you to punch them in the face, but I want you to break their teeth. It's in the Bible, okay? Oh, the Bible's boring. God is boring. No, you're not reading it properly. Break the teeth of the wicked. Anybody ever had a really bad toothache? Yeah, several of us in here. As a boy growing up, I've done a lot of um, not smart things, okay? I have broken more bones than, than you want to talk about. I have cut myself and had stitches several times. I have torn ligaments and all of that. And I mean, I have, I have done some ridiculous things. The worst pain by far I have ever had is a toothache. Now, you don't need to know this, just oversharing a little bit. I have really bad soft teeth ever since I was a kid. Like I brush and floss my teeth like crazy. I went to the dentist one time, I had 13 cavities at once. Okay, that's just, just part of being Trevor, okay? Not because I don't brush my teeth and take care of them, don't worry, okay? So I have had a few toothaches that kept me up pacing the floor all night long to where it literally sounded like a better plan in my mind to bash my head into the wall than to have this toothache, okay? And that's what David is calling on his enemies. Let's settle down, David. Why do I say all this? A couple years ago, I preached a message, and it was one of my favorite messages, and really is one of my favorite messages to refer back to. And the message was titled, Go Ahead, He's Got Big Shoulders. And in this message, I, I, I made this case, and it was actually from David. It's actually from Psalm 13. You don't have to turn there now. But David is just going off kind of at God. He is just letting God have it. Now, I, I want to put this out there. There is a, uh, a, a humble kind of um, way to go about this that you're being respectful, but... I think God has big enough shoulders to when we are struggling with something so much, it's okay to say it. Um, just big breaking news here, God knows your heart already anyway. And something happens when we're going to God again respectfully, but when we go to God and we just empty out to God, whatever it is, like David's doing here in Psalm 3 and Psalm 13, He's just like going off to God, just expressing what is on his heart. There's something that happens and God, it's not fair. And I want them, I want retribution and I want, and you just let it all out to God. God does something in us. In fact, I wrote this down. 
when you communicate to God the angst and hurtful things on your heart, it allows him to work on you and produce forgiveness in a way that only he can. Go ahead. He's got big shoulders. He can take it. Again, do it respectfully as much as you can. But God knows what's in there, and he wants you to just get it out. Express it to him, what it is that's on there. But forgiveness isn't fair. So forgiveness isn't forgetting. Forgiveness isn't fair. Here's probably my favorite one. Forgiveness isn't facile. Now, you're reading that maybe, and you're going, facile? Fa what, what, is, what is facile? Facile. Okay. All of my Spanish-speaking friends in here, what does this word mean? Easy. Okay, easy doesn't start with an F, so I couldn't use easy, all right? So I had to go to Spanglish. Sorry, okay? It's just a preacher thing, all right? Forgiveness isn't facile. Forgiveness isn't easy. Now, do I need a passage of scripture or a Bible verse to prove this to you? Probably not, right? It's hard. Forgiving someone is very, very difficult. Why? Because they hurt you. Because they took something from you that can't be given back. Because they cause damage that can't be fixed. You can't go back on that. They hurt you. Forgiveness isn't easy. I heard this said, and this is just one category. Adultery is biblical grounds for divorce. But it's also biblical grounds for forgiveness. You want to talk about not being easy. So forgiveness isn't forgetting. Forgiveness isn't fair. Forgiveness isn't facile. And forgiveness, last of the isn't, is, isn't foolish. Forgiveness isn't foolish. Meaning it is the wise thing to do. But you may say, but... Not forgiving that person is the only way I get to get them back or to hold something against them. That may be your only opportunity at retribution. Here's the funny, not funny thing about that. You know what often happens when we are harboring this unforgiveness at people? Many times, maybe even most times, they don't even know. They don't, or they don't know the extent that they hurt you. Or maybe they don't even care. Maybe they just really don't even give a rip. Maybe that person's not even around anymore. Or maybe it wasn't even a person. It was just a situation that happened. And you're holding this unforgiveness against something that you can't even have a conversation with. Seems kind of silly, doesn't it? But forgiveness isn't foolish. Now, three things what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is faith-filled. Forgiveness is faith-filled. Now, we're in church. I wanted to keep it right, but what I wanted it to be, and it was an F word, it worked. Forgiveness is flipping difficult. But I didn't want to say that in church. So we went the right way and said forgiveness is faith-filled. But that's what we mean by that. Matthew 5, 44, but I tell you, love your enemies. No, Jesus, I don't want to love my enemies. That's why they're my enemies. If I love them, they wouldn't be my enemies. I don't think that really matters to Jesus, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So there's a big question here to ask. Why would I want to do that? Why would I want to, other than the fact that Jesus commands it, okay, fine, but what's in it for me? What, what do I benefit from forgiving someone? What is my motivation? Great question. The next and the last two points are the reason why you want to forgive. Forgiveness is faith-filled. 
Forgiveness is freeing. Forgiveness is freeing. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. What do people usually say when they've finally forgiven someone, especially after they've held that for a really long time? What, what do they say? They say, it felt like a what? A weight was lifted off of me. See, see that's, uh, that must be a thing because we all know that. We, like, like several of you said that and several of you just were like, I hope I'm, I don't want to be wrong. I didn't say it, but you knew it. I felt like this weight was lifted off of me or weight was lifted off of my shoulders. That's what forgiveness is like. It's freeing. There's something that this forgiveness does inside of us that is just like unexplainable. You, you, you just like scientifically, it doesn't make sense, but there's like, it's, it's like this physical weight or burden is lifted off of us. Come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest, Jesus says. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Now, if you don't know what a yoke is, I don't really know what a yoke is, but I think it's that thing that, that would go on the oxen that they would pull the plow and all of that, okay? They didn't have tractors, you know, there was no John Deere and all that back then. So, like, that yoke, like that thing that you have to bear on your shoulders, Jesus is saying, hey, hey, let's, let's trade, Let's, I will take your heavy burden, your yoke, and you take mine, because mine's really good, mine's really light, mine's really easy. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. As I was researching this week, I stumbled upon a website, and it was not a Christian, not a faith-based website, but it was a website that just had a bunch of forgiveness stories. And I, I want to read one of them to you. It's real short. It says, Mary Johnson lost her son in 1993 after a then-teenaged O'Shea Israel got into a fight with him at a party and shot him. With so much unanswered, Johnson went to visit O'Shea in jail. Now, pause the story for a second. She goes and sees him and meets him for the first time, and then later on is telling him about that experience that she had with him. So she's speaking directly to him. She says this, I began to feel this movement in my feet. Now, again, this is not a faith-based website. This is just a completely secular story. I began to feel this movement in my feet. It moved up my legs, and it just moved up my body. When I felt it leave me, I instantly knew that all the anger and hatred and animosity I had in my heart for you for 12 years was over. I had totally forgiven you. Whoa. Here is this lady that, that, that may not have known about the my yoke is easy, my burden is light verse, and, you know, I, but, but physically felt something in her body leave her when she finally forgave that young man. That's what forgiveness does. It is freeing. I love this quote by Craig Rochelle. He says, it's not about how much forgiveness they deserve. It's about how much freedom you desire. Whoa. Guess what? This whole forgiveness thing, it's not about them. It's about you. That's big. That's heavy. So forgiveness is faith-filled. Forgiveness is freeing. And the last one... Forgiveness is flowing. Now I'll have to explain this one a little bit. Forgiveness is flowing. Matthew 6, 14, it says, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Now, this kind of goes along with that thing that we were talking about last week. And last week where the whole forgiveness thing came in was, 
we saw that God doesn't listen to our prayers when we don't forgive. Now, that's a pretty big deal because I want my prayers to be answered, right? Like, that was a, a, a major thing that we learned last week. But this verse right here is saying that, hey, wait a minute. When you forgive other people, that's when God forgives you? Well, that's taking it a whole nother level from, well, God just doesn't listen to your prayers, right? Because... You know, that's, we can, we can maybe talk about that and deal with that, but bad things, really, really, really bad things start happening when God doesn't forgive you of your sins. And what Jesus does and what was extremely common for them back in that day when they were speaking or, or in literary works is he backs it up and he says the same thing, but he flips it around and says the antagonist of it. So he says... For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But, circle that word in your Bible, but. That is huge in this part right here. But, if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Again, that should be a humongous red flag about the biggest one that we can wave because like I said really really bad things start to happen when God isn't forgiving your sins now to what measure I don't know is it pound for pound I don't know whole other theological conversation with somebody way smarter than me for another day But the last thing in the world that you want is to have unforgiveness and somehow, some way, God not forgiving you of your sin. How serious is this forgiveness to God? Matthew 5, verse 23. He says, Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there, remember that your brother or sister has something against you. Now, what Jesus is saying is, you know how important sacrifices and offerings were back then. We, we, we will never understand this because there, there wasn't a resurrection. We couldn't, you know, they couldn't go directly to Jesus yet. There was no, so they had sacrifices, they had offerings, and they had these things that they kind of had to do to bring them back in, in right relationship with God. And so Jesus is saying, hey guys, you know how important that is to go make your offering and, and make your sacrifices and do all that, and you bring that directly to the temple and you would lay it down right there at the altar and that whole deal. You know how important that is? Hey, if you're on the way to do that and you remember, oh my goodness, there, we, my, my, my brother or sister in Christ, we had this issue, this unresolved thing. If you remember about that thing, just drop your offering right there and go fix that with your brother or sister. That's how important this is to God. This unforgiveness thing is huge to him. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there, remember that your brother or sister has something against you. Leave your gift there in front of the altar. First, go and be reconciled to them. Then come and offer your gift. Wow. Jesus is saying that relationships with other believers is more important than making an offering to him. That's a big deal. That's how important our relationships are and that's how important this unforgiveness thing is. Matthew 6, 14 again. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. So if you want forgiveness from your heavenly Father, forgive others. Because that forgiveness is flowing. It flows to us and through us out to others. So what is forgiveness? Forgiveness isn't forgetting Forgiveness isn't fair, it's not facile, it's not foolish, 
but it is faith-filled, it is freeing, and it is flowing. Now, that was the easy part of the message. Here's where the rubber meets the road. I'm going to have Gabe come up and play on the keyboard. Question. Who have you not forgiven? Who is it maybe that God has laid on your heart recently? And maybe even today there has been a face that's been in your head of somebody that you've not forgiven. God laying someone on your heart this morning? Because we've heard how serious it is to not forgive, to hold that unforgiveness. So I'm going to give you an opportunity this morning to get that taken care of. Who has God brought to your mind? Maybe it's a relative. Maybe it's an ex-business partner. Maybe it's a, a spouse or an ex-spouse. Maybe it's someone from your past, someone who hurt you. Maybe it's someone who doesn't even know you exist and you are holding just this bitterness and anger and unforgiveness against them. Maybe it's God. Maybe it's God and in his perfect will and in his omniscience allowed something to happen in your life that you just disagree with and you just can't get over it. And you can't forgive God. Maybe it's yourself. Maybe you have made some awful choices in the past and it has led you to places that you were not in your worst nightmares and you just can't forgive yourself because you told yourself you would never do that thing again you told yourself you would never go there and you just can't forgive yourself Ephesians 4.31, it says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. And then he says in verse 32, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. You want a reason to forgive? reason is because you have been forgiven. Would you bow your heads this morning? Who is it? Who is it in your life that needs forgiveness? Who is it that you have been just hanging on to that you just won't let them go? God has laid on your heart this morning. You just got to let them go. This isn't about them any longer. It's about you. It's not about how much forgiveness they deserve. It's about how much freedom you desire. Right now in this moment, would you let it go? Would you forgive that person? Maybe it is somebody that hurt you more than you can ever express. Maybe it is God that you need to forgive. Maybe it is yourself. Right now in this moment, forgive. Don't hold on to it any longer. It's not worth it. It's not healthy. Let it go. Father, we come to you this morning. We're grateful and thankful, Lord, that 
You are the best forgiver that there is. That your word says in Romans, while we were still sinners, you died for us. Thank you, God, that as we were doing evil against you, sinning against you, you still chose to forgive. You still chose to give your son Jesus for us. God, thank you for that. God, help me to not think that I can hold bitterness or anger in my heart against someone when you've forgiven me so many times. Thank you, God, that you don't hold our sin against us when we confess it to you. Your word says that you separated as far as the east is from the west. Thank you, Lord, that you have given us the ultimate forgiveness. Heads are still bowed, eyes are closed. If you have not experienced true and total forgiveness from Christ this morning, I want to give you that opportunity. Maybe you just uh, have been holding out to give your life to Jesus. Today is the day. Because we've seen how much forgiveness he's ready to give us. Right now in this moment, would you just say, God, I trust you. God, I give my life to you. God, I trust that your son Jesus died for me. God, save me. God, change me. I give you my life. No one looking around. Did anybody say that prayer this morning for the first time? I would love to celebrate with you. I'm not going to call you out, but would you just slip your hand up? Say, I got it right today. I finally decided to give Jesus my life. God, thank you for what you're doing in hearts. Thank you for the amazing example of forgiveness in Jesus. God, help us to never harbor bitterness again in our hearts, knowing that forgiving frees us, that you listen to our prayers, and that you forgive us the more that we forgive. God, do something amazing in this church. God, as we go to offering this morning, help us to be generous, help us to be wise, help us to do your will. We pray all of this in the awesome, amazing, forgiving, and powerful name of Jesus. And all of God's people said, amen.